We did a survey uh, this spring in 10 European countries and asked about a whole range of issues. Um, one of the things we, we asked people about was international engagement. And what we see is that uh, there's a reluctance among many in Europe to kind of engage in international affairs. Uh, in most of the countries we polled, people said, we need to focus on problems here at home and not really focus on helping out other countries, for example. And we saw that sentiment especially strongly in, uh, in, in Greece, in Italy, in Poland, and here in Hungary. Um, less so in you know, Sweden, Germany, Spain. So there was some variation across Europe, but in general what we see is that um, there's a reluctance to get involved in the affairs of other countries and a desire to really sort of focus on problems at home. We did ask some questions in Europe about the refugee issue. And one of the things that's clear is that in the minds of many people, uh, they make a connection between the refugee issue and their fears about terrorism. So in most of the countries where we'd surveyed, the balance of opinion is that um, you know, more refugees into the country is going to uh, increase the risk of terrorism in the country. And we know that terrorism is a big fear. Um, you know, both in Europe and in the United States, we uh, surveyed people, we asked them about a number of potential threats to their country. And what we see is that ISIS is at the top of the list in the United States and, and in just about all the European countries that we surveyed. So you know, that whole topic of terrorism is once again very much on the minds of people, uh, both in the U.S. and in Europe as well. There was a question we asked all around the world in a 40-country survey we conducted last year. Uh, do you think that children in our country today are going to be financially better off than their parents when they grow up? And, uh, you know, in places like Latin America, Africa, Asia, we see a lot of optimism for the next generation. In the Middle East, and then especially in Europe and in the United States, we see a lot of pessimism. Most people say that we don't think the next generation is going to be financially better off than their parents. So, the, you know, that question, I think, really taps into the fact that, you know, it's not just today's economy, it's really this anxiety about the long-term economic future. And we see that, uh, you know, strongly on both sides of the Atlantic. We did ask uh, about uh, uh, Clinton and Trump, uh, as well as President Obama, in Europe this year in our survey. Um, and when we ask about President Obama, what we've consistently seen every time is that he's very popular in Europe. Maybe not quite as popular as he was when he was first elected, but he still gets very high ratings. Um, Hillary Clinton uh, also gets very high ratings, uh, not as high as President Obama's ratings, but on balance, uh, you know, very positive in Europe. And then overwhelmingly negative views towards Donald Trump. Uh, I believe it was uh, a, a median of 85 percent across the uh, 10 European countries we surveyed said that uh, they don't have confidence in Donald Trump. So, you know, I, I don't think that, you know, given the stories we've seen over the last year, the press coverage that's, that's happened in Europe and things like that, it's too much of a surprise that uh, Trump would get negative ratings in Europe. But nonetheless, our survey really, I think, highlighted how negative Europeans feel about Donald Trump. One of the things I think our polling highlights is the fact that uh, there's so much division within the American electorate and so much polarization. You know, there's just been um, a lot of increasing polarization in the United States in recent years between Democrats and Republicans seeing issues very, very differently. And you see that again in, uh, in this year's uh, election cycle. Trump supporters uh, and Clinton supporters having just very, very different views about a whole range of issues. For example, when it comes to attitudes um, related to minorities, views about uh, the value and, and, and diversity, a uh, value of diversity in American society, some of those types of questions. Um, you see very, very different views between Democrats and Republicans and between supporters uh, of the two major party candidates. There is a, you know, a growing populism, I think uh, many would argue, in the United States. And there might be sort of left of center elements of that. Uh, you saw sort of populist rhetoric from the Bernie Sanders campaign in many ways uh, during the, the competition for the Democratic nomination. But certainly you've seen it very strongly uh, during the presidential campaign and you know, from, from, from Donald Trump and his supporters. And that 
populism is, is t tapped into, I think, a number of strains that we see in American public opinion, and in truth, we see at least some of those same strains in uh, European public opinion too. Uh, uh, you know, a, a deep-seated economic frustration among many, uh, a lot of anti-immigration sentiments among many, um, and a real um, lack of confidence in major political institutions among many as well. Um, there's a question that we and other survey researchers have asked for a very long time about how much trust you have in the U.S. government to, to sort of do the right thing most of the time. And that question, that amount of trust has been at or near an all-time low in recent years.